The Marlin 336 is quite possibly one of the most iconic modern lever action rifles we have seen in the last 50 years. Not to say that there aren't other great lever action rifles on the market today, but if you are looking for a rifle chambered in 3030, most people will be pointing directly to the Marlin 336. However, there are basically three questions that a lot of people are asking in 2023. Why should I own a lever action? What caliber should I get it in? And is it still viable for home defense? We're gonna answer all three of those questions as well as doing an overview of the Marlin 336 coming up. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the Marlin 336 W chambered in 3030 Winchester. This is just going to be a quick overview of the rifle itself. Uh, we're gonna talk about the three questions that I brought up at the beginning of the video and talk about where we're going from here. This is going to be my uh, first impressions of this particular lever action rifle. Hopefully I will have a few more coming into the channel, especially after talking to some great people at SHOT Show. I think I have a path on getting some more lever actions to uh, discuss with you guys. In addition to that, I'm going to be doing a collaboration with someone really cool here coming up very, very, very soon. And uh, so this is kind of be a little bit of a lead up to that uh, video series that we're gonna be doing. So very excited about that. So the first question is, why did I even get a lever action rifle? Well, it's pretty simple. First and foremost, we're starting to see a resurgence of lever action rifles with the popularity of shows like Yellowstone. Uh, Westerns are starting to slowly become trendy again, and we're starting to see people get into uh, lever action guns more and more. In addition to that, people like Chris Costa has been partnering with a couple of different companies to come out with some really cool furniture sets that is going to modernize this um, rifle even more with some skeletonized stocks and some M-lock hand guards. Uh, they look really, really cool. Also, we're starting to see more and more companies come out with threaded barreled versions for you to suppress a uh, lever action rifle as well. So let me tell you, there is a lot of really cool things happening with something that a lot of people would say is pretty antiquated. I am one of those people. I thought that the lever action rifle is something of the past when you have things like AR-15s and AK-47s, but realistically, I can see where there is a really good niche. In addition to that, uh, I have been interested in filling a gap for um, my understanding of how these types of rifles work and being able to train with something like this would be something really cool because this rifle can go to just about every jurisdictions. So if you're wanting to go to California, you don't really need to worry about any type of assault weapon ban because this is just kind of a FUD gun, you know? Uh, no offense to anybody, but realistically, that's kind of how they see it. Go to places like New Jersey, New York, more times than not, you're going to be able to have this with you um, legally the way that they want you to carry it, you know? But you would be able to easily hunt with something like this in some of those more restricted states is kind of what I'm getting at. Now, the next question is, for me, why 3030? That's a really easy question to answer because that's what they had. <laughs> and I was just eager to get into lever action rifles. In addition to that, uh, someone I'm gonna be doing a collab with here, coming up, I'm gonna keep on saying this, uh, is going to have a couple of lever actions in different calibers. So we're gonna be able to look at a whole host of different calibers, whether it be 337, 3030, 4570, and so on and so forth. But realistically, uh, for me, 
3030 is actually going to be a really good rifle for me with what I'm trying to do. I'm going to be able to hunt things as big as like mule deer, uh, maybe even get into elk with one of these. I would say that elk would be a little, a little too big for 3030, but if you can get a good shot placement on an elk, you should be able to drop one. Um, also, depending on the range as well. And that's one of the downsides to 3030 is its effective range is usually going to be 200 yards and in, um, which does help with a couple of other aspects. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But as far as the caliber goes of what you should get, that's going to be up to you and it's going to depend on what you need it to do. Is it going to be a hunting rifle? Then you're going to need to look at what type of game you're going to hunt. If you're gonna look at uh, elk or moose or caribou or something like that, 4570 probably would be a better uh, round for you. If you're looking at uh, whitetail or mule deer, um, maybe some antelope, 3030 is going to be just fine as well. If you're going to look at doing something suppressed for home defense, 357 or 44 Magnum is going to be a viable option as well because that is not only going to give you the flexibility to either use 44 Special or 38 Special depending on which one you get, but it's also going to be fairly easy to suppress as well with some of the different models that you have on the market today. And then finally, is the lever gun going to be viable in this day and age? That's a question that you're going to have to answer yourself because for a lot of people, you know, I'm just going to turn around and grab the first AR or first AK that I have close to me and run that because that's what I'm most familiar with. But for individuals who may be in restricted states, a lever gun may actually be a little bit better for home defense than an AR. Uh, even if you have the ability to own an AR, you know, a Lever action in 357 might be a better option for you, especially if you're using personal defense loads as well. So, you know, there's a lot of different aspects that you need to consider, but one of the biggest pieces that this is going to uh, work best on when it comes to whether or not you should own one is its flexibility to go from state to state to state and no one even questioned it. I mean, to be frankly honest with you, in some states you could just put this in the rear window of your truck and no one's ever going to mess with you. No one's going to ask you a question. They're just going to look at it and be like, ah, yeah, there's a hunting rifle, big deal, woo, you know? I don't advise that, but you, you get where I'm going with it. Those are kind of the aspects of why I'm getting into lever actions, um, wanting to explore it a little bit more. And uh, there's a couple of other things that I'm gonna be getting into here in the future that lever gun might actually be a viable option. Now, moving forward, this rifle is not staying this way. I already have a few upgrades that I'm gonna be looking at. Um, I'm gonna be looking into utilizing this tapped receiver for certain types of optics. Which one, I'm not really sure yet, but uh, at the very minimum, we're gonna be looking at some type of red dot, maybe an LPVO, I don't know. We'll look at that here moving forward, but I will say that I'm excited about the lever action rifle something that I considered a FUD gun, and maybe I'm just getting older and becoming a FUD myself, I don't know, but realistically, this rifle here has been beautiful, and uh, I've had a lot of fun shooting the 20 rounds through it so far. If you guys are interested, I am using the Hornady Lever Revolution, or however you say it. This is going to be a 160 grain, uh, FTX projectile. So this uh, so far has grouped fairly well. Um, we're talking about, I'd say maybe um, about a three inch spread at, uh, maybe closer to four inch spread at uh, 50 yards. Not saying that that's the rifle's accuracy. That was my accuracy just laying down in the dirt and shooting. Right. I think right. that once I put at the very minimum a red yeah. dot on this, I should be able to extract a lot better accuracy out of this rifle, especially putting it against the rest as well. So we're gonna look into that moving forward and see how much better 
accuracy I can pull out of this rifle uh, in the future. But let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. What has been your opinion about lever action rifles? What is your favorite caliber? What is your favorite brand? Let me know all of that down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Again, I'm not an expert when it comes to lever action rifles. This is an area that I know very little bit about and I'm wanting to expand my horizons and understand these uh, new platforms better. So if I ever need to pick one up, I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With that being said, I really do appreciate everybody swinging by. Thank you for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate you guys considering subscribing. Naturally, a great way to support the channel is to share this video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, and let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. Always interested in having a great conversation with you as well. If you're interested or in a position to financially support the channel, a great way to do that is by picking up some of my merch over at Ballistic Inc. They are my shop uh, that supports my merch, and I'd appreciate you guys swinging by and checking that out. And if you don't like my stuff, there's a whole host of other YouTube content creators over there as well that you can jump in on. So let me know. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you again so much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.